and welcome to Sanford Flip Math. Uh, we are in AP Calculus, working through Chapter 6, which is the uh, Differential Equations chapter. We are working in the Section 2, which is about use substitution uh, for antiderivatives or indefinite integrals or even definite integrals. Uh, working through the Finney Domain Weights Kennedy book, uh, what you see in front of you is the table of antiderivative uh, formulas or templates from page 322 and 6.1. Uh, again, uh, these are pretty much just the reverse of the, the derivative formulas we learned back in Chapter 3. Uh, really, my reason for having them here is just so they're in the video. So if you want to refer back to the first half minute minute of the video uh, to, to look at them, here they are. Uh, but none of these are really a shock to you. Okay, We're going to work on three different examples in this video. And that's, that's the plan, uh, just to get more practice, more examples. And uh, just a reminder that what we are looking for is basically a function inside of a function. Uh, you know, we, as we look at this, we, it looks more complicated than something that just fits in that little, any of those little list uh, rules in the list that we saw. So what we're looking for then, <clears throat> our next thing is to look for a function inside of a function. Well, I see this one minus r squared inside the square root function, and that says to me, you know what, there's probably uh, some kind of a function inside of a function there. Okay, so just a quick little note to self, if I make this uh, u, 1 minus r squared, then the derivative of that is just going to be negative 2r. Now, I see a little r in here, and that's that same little r there. So, again, what I'm looking for is a function inside of a function, and if, there, if that's what it looks like, then the inside function its derivative has to be present multiplied somehow uh, with what's there. This is basically what happened was the chain rule. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is use this du dr and make a replacement for u, make a replacement for dr. So I'm going to solve this for dr. So I'm multiplying by dr and then I'm dividing by a negative 2r. So this is going to be du over negative 2r. And all I'm going to do is make replacements. Okay, so I'm just rewriting the original expression here. Okay, and hang on just one hot second. That's got to go away. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so this is going to be r. And I'm going to write the u, square root of u, a little bit differently. I'm going to write this u to the 1 half. And you've seen us do this lots of times. And instead of writing dr, I'm going to write du over negative 2r. I'm making a replacement for what dr was. Okay. Now, as we look at this, notice that the r is going to divide out, which is kind of sweet. And that negative 2, I can, or that, yeah, that negative 2, I can bring out in front because now this is just a constant being multiplied. And so this is really u to the 1 half du. Okay. <clears throat> now, let me talk just for a hot second here about the number, the limits of integration. The limits of integration, these, these limits that we started with, the, the 0 and the 1, were about r. Okay, so those are r values. r equals 0, r equals 1. But when this changed into du right here, then it's not about r anymore. It's about u. So we have to actually change those values based on u values. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take these r values and put them into u, and I'm saying 1 minus 0 squared. So that's now 1. I'm now going to take this 1 and put this in and say 1 minus 1 squared, and now that's 0. Now, this is a little funky because really what just happened is they're tra trading positions. So it used to be 0 on the bottom. Now it's going to be 1. It used to be 1 on the top, now it's going to be 0, because those are u values. We're not just trading values. What we're doing is substituting u values in place of r. Okay. At this point, this is now just like any other problem we've already done. Okay, so we've, we've been doing a lot of these. So negative 1 half, now the antiderivative of u to the 1 half is u to the 3 halves, and we're going to divide by our new exponent. And we have to then evaluate that between 1 and 0 instead of 0 and 1. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to rewrite this one more time. Okay, so this is going to be negative one half. Now it's negative one half times the answer, or I can distribute that, but I'm going to leave this negative one half on the outside, and I'm multiplying by, by a reciprocal. And again, we're going to evaluate that from one to zero. Okay, all right, I need to switch to another page. Okay, so this is negative times two thirds. u to the 3 halves evaluated from 1 to 0. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to dump the 0 in. Remember, your top one goes in first. So this becomes negative 1 half times 2 thirds times 0 to the 3 halves. I know most of you are yelling at me already. Okay. No, I didn't want to make those brackets. Sorry. <coughs> didn't want to make this a bracket. All right, let's just cheat. Goodbye. <laughs> Sorry. Minus, okay, now I'm going to put in the 1. So this is 2 thirds times 1 to the 3 halves. Okay, so when all is said and done here, a little funkier working on the iPad. Like this, I'm recording on the iPad in the app called Explain Everything. Okay, so zero, th this whole first term is nothing. This next term is just going to be 1 times a negative 2 thirds. So this is now 1 third. Okay, quick little note here. We, ne we never <coughs> substituted the u back in, the 1 minus x squared. And that's okay because we changed everything to be about u instead of x, or in this case I believe it was r. Okay, so we're done with this. This, this is it. Okay, Scroll, uh, rewind back if you need to. Okay, we're going to keep on here. <clears throat> well, this looks scary. Okay, one of the things I need you to see here is that remember that this exponent is really for the answer from cosine. So just that part alone is really cosine 2 theta to the negative third power. Okay, so I'm going to continue rewriting this. Okay, and then there's a sine of 2 theta, d theta. Okay, so I want you to take, hit pause for just a second and look at this, and I know I've kind of highlighted some color there to make it obvious, but think about what's on the inside, and is the derivative of the inside present here, ignoring any constant multiplications? Okay, so I'm hoping that what you saw was this thing is on the inside. If I make u equal to the cosine of 2 theta, the u d theta this time, would be a negative sine 2 theta times 2. Sorry that that wrapped funky. Okay, so what we're going to do then is make this, so, I, well, before I do anything, let me rewrite it one more time. d u d theta, sorry, the handwriting is kind of funky here, negative 2 sine 2 theta. It's because I can't lay my hand on the iPad and write at the same time. That's, that's why this is so goofy. All right, so do you see that the sine of 2 theta is right here? That's the derivative of the inside already there, okay? So let's, let's take it from there, and we'll do some rearranging of this. Okay, so d theta is going to be equal to uh, I'm multiplying by d theta and dividing by the other stuff on the other side. So du over negative 2 sine 2 theta. Okay? All right. So all of this is so I can make some substitutions here. Okay? So the integral, I am not going to write my limits of integration here. This is going to be u to the negative third times instead of, well, I'm going to go ahead and write sine of 2 theta. And that stuff is going to cancel out in just a hot second. Instead of d theta, I'm going to write du over negative 2 sine 2 theta. Okay, so the cool thing here is sine of 2 theta, sine of 2 theta is gone. All I'm left with now, well, this is kind of funky that this is so similar to the last one, negative 1 half on the outside because the negative 2 is in the bottom, u to the negative third, sorry, that's a 3, du. This problem actually looks a lot easier than the last one, doesn't it? Now, before I 
get too excited here and just try and finish the problem. Let me uh, remind you that if, if theta is 0, then u is, well, we have to put 0 into u. So 2 times 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. When theta is pi over 6, I'm just taking the limits of integration, then 2 times pi over 6 is pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3, that's cosine of 60. Okay, you do it in your head. Is that what you got? Okay, so we're going to go from 1 to 1 half. From 1 to 1 half. Now, because I have limits of integration that are about u, not me and u, but the letter u, <clears throat> we're never, ever going to come back to the cosine again. We are done with the cosine. All we're going to do is do antiderivative and then substitute the values that we have here. Okay, so the antiderivative of u to the negative third is u to the negative 2. Hang on, I gotta, let me back up just a little bit, sorry. I have to put in my negative 1 half, and I would not have room, and it would look funky. All right, antiderivative of u to the negative third is u to the negative 2, and I have to divide by the new exponent, then I'm going to evaluate it between 1 and 1 half. And don't worry about the smaller number being on top. All you care about is the fact that it was substituted in place of, you know, the old theta value, you have to put in the corresponding u value in the right spot. Okay, let me do uh, one more deal here. So negative times a negative is going to be positive. This is going to be one-fourth. Mm, tell you what, I don't know. Maybe you don't like this. You, you decide how you want to write this. I'm going to write uh, a negative times a negative is still positive. This is going to be, come on, Sanford. One more time. 4 u squared, then I'm going to put 1 and 1 half. Okay, so 1 over 4 u squared from 1 to 1 half. Okay, remember that. 1 over 4 u squared. 1 over 4 u squared from 1 to 1 half. All right, so now we're going to dump some numbers in. So we're going to put in 1 half. Now you're going to love this. And by love this, I mean not love this. It's all right. It works out kind of nice. Minus, now dump in the 1. Okay, so this is 1 over 4 times 1 fourth. So this is really, 4 times 1 fourth is just 1. This is 1 over 1. Equals 3 fourths. And we're done, okay? Once, once you do the u substitution, the whole idea of it is to make things easier, okay? All right, so we got one more that we're going to go, we're going to do, and here we go. Okay, this is kind of similar to what we already did, okay? <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, do you see a function inside of a function and its derivative present. Now, I see, some, some people may look at this and see a secant tangent because of, like the derivative of secant is secant tangent. But remember, this is tangent squared and secant squared. And secant squared is kind of a loaded deal. So here's secant squared. It is the derivative of tangent. So as I'm thinking u substitution, I'm thinking the inside is probably a tangent. Now, just a reminder that this is the same thing as tangent x squared, and then here's secant squared. So, again, the inside function is tangent. So du dx is going to be secant squared. Okay. All right, so process-wise, I need to solve for dx so I can make a replacement. I need to uh, substitute u val uh, x values in to get u values for the limits of integration, uh, of anti, yeah, integration, that was it, sorry. Talked myself out of it. All right, so we got a lot of bit little foo-foo stuff to do here, and I'm going to kind of move it along because I'm guessing that we're going pretty long now. Okay.
So this is going to be the integral of u squared, because u is tangent, times secant squared. Now dx is du over secant squared. Okay, look at that. That's kind of sweet. Okay, so this is really going to be the integral of u squared du, and that's like the easiest integral you can ever do. Okay, now before we get too far ahead, if u is x, then the tangent, I'm sorry, if u is 0, then the tangent of 0 is 0 also. For pi over 4, the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Well, that's kind of sweet. So this is actually going to go pretty easy. This is probably the easiest one that we've done all day. Okay, so antiderivative of u squared is u cubed. And we're going to put that over the new exponent, over 3. And then we're going to go from u value to u value. So we're going to dump in the 1, 1 cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3. So this is going to be 1. Now this is not 1 third cubed. This is 1, third, one cubed over 3. So that's really just 1 third minus 0 or 1 third. Okay, so I just want to make some quick little notes here, okay? And then we'll... Okay, so we're looking for a u that is the inside function and its derivative, derivative must be present. Okay, again, I'm sorry about my handwriting on the iPad. It's jacked up. Not that my handwriting's ever good, okay? Then we, we have to substitute the u. We also have to replace whatever dx was uh, with, you know, in, with whatever, whoa, oh, that was funny, with whatever uh, du is about, okay? And then if there are any limits of integration, they have to be about u instead of x also. Okay, and then you don't ever have to go back. If there are limits, you don't ever have to go back. Okay, if there aren't limits, then you do have to go back to about x or about whatever. Okay, all right, well, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, this is Sanford Flip Math on the iPad. I think this is a first. We're out. Bye.